Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg admits a, quote, operational mistake after the company failed to take down a page promoting vigilante events in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That night, three anti-racism protesters were shot, two fatally. 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse has been charged with murder in those two deaths. In a video statement, Zuckerberg acknowledged that the page in question violated Facebook's terms of service. He then blamed contracted content moderators for ignoring hundreds of complaints about the page. Facebook says an internal investigation found no indication that the since-removed page had any direct connection with the shootings. To talk more about all this, I want to bring in Jennifer Greigel, a social media expert and assistant professor at Syracuse University. Professor, great to have you with us. So Zuckerberg Hi. is blaming contractors for the foul up. Contractors, of course, did look at the page, we know, and decided that it was fine. But several Facebook users had complained about it, and it was even picked up by Alex Jones's site, InfoWars. So how does Facebook content moderation actually work? Is a vigilante event page okay by Facebook standards? If anything, we need to look more closely at Mark Zuckerberg here. He has a history of not doing enough content moderation. Uh, and to hear him just you know, write this off as an operational mistake is it's inappropriate uh, and it's um, it's not helping the situation. It's not helping to make, uh, you know, Facebook a safer platform. Uh, and we need him really to up his responsibilities here. So the fact that this was flagged by hundreds of people and it wasn't uh, removed uh, just shows that there isn't enough support, there isn't enough training. And then to say that, you know, they wrote a new policy about this, um, you know, just points out that they should have already been on top of this. And also the policy references, you know, kind of more of the conspiratorial type groups. Um, I would say that they need to update that policy for militia groups, because I don't think that people think these are the same types of things. But as we see now, uh, these uh, militia groups can also be out there, uh, you know, committing violent acts and crimes and using Facebook uh, as a way to organize them. Yeah, well, it was only last week that Facebook said that it was going to crack down on militia organizations on the site under mm -hmm. a new so-called dangerous individuals and organizations policy. Would you tell us a little bit more about that policy and who they're targeting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in that announcement, uh, you know, they had said that they removed, you know, many pages uh, affiliated with QAnon. But that was only in response to news reports that showed how viral uh, some of the, the videos, the pages, the posts uh, by this problematic, uh, you know, conspiracy theory group, essentially, uh, has been and how widely it's uh, grown and how really Facebook has been the platform that's helped them, uh, you know, kind of catch hold here and to, to spread this, you know, troubling ideology. So um, if anything, again, they were reacting to public outcry. Um, and again, they're going to do it again here. But what this shows is just this pattern with Mark Zuckerberg, where he doesn't actually do a full on rest, risk assessment to assess what are the dangerous groups out there? Uh, how many employees do we need to have in place to make sure that they are out there using the platform for harm uh, and making sure that the process has enough uh, individuals essentially with the proper skills and training uh, to make sure that they can be effective in that. So. Sometimes it's uh, issues, too, of local language. So we've seen, again, like Facebook being used for genocide in Myanmar. So we shouldn't be surprised here that uh, there's issues uh, with these violent groups here in the United States now. It's just, again, another signal that Facebook is dangerous. Well, on that note, Facebook has been caught hosting extremist content many times. So at mm -hmm. what point could the company actually be open to liability? Mm -hmm. And that's a great question. So, you know, I want to, uh, you know, uh, speak to some of the reporting that's come out recently, too, about internal leaks uh, at Facebook um, from folks of, at BuzzFeed, you know. And, and what's happening here is that they're own employees are starting to exhibit what we call corporate citizenship. They are pushing the company forward in, in further than what is required by law because there's ineffective regulation, very little regulation when it comes to these platforms. And they're starting to drive change from inside. Why? Because Mark Zuckerberg hasn't stepped up and 
you know, the public sees uh, the harms that this platform has contributed to. And the employees are seeing this and they're there. And so they're one of the few groups, I think, left that can have an impact. So, again, we're kind of stuck right now until regulators get more of an appetite to take this this big uh, issue on. Um, until then, you know, again, it's it's these employees, uh, it's public outcry. And if you're working at Facebook right now, you have kind of like two options. You can either, you know, uh, leak or you can like resign. Uh, it, it's it's become so evident uh, how much harm is happening uh, on this platform and the inaction. Hmm. Uh, I know that that's a question that has plagued Congress as well. Well, I want to follow up a little bit more on this new policy that Facebook has implemented. Mm -hmm. It's also been criticized for removing some left-wing pages. Anti-racist groups report that they've been shut down in the same sweep that's targeted violent white supremacist organizations. Mm -hmm. Does Facebook actually view these anti-racist organizations as dangerous or criminal under their policy, or is this an, uh, an attempt to appease um, some some political gods by saying we're taking down left and right. Yeah. And again, this speaks to, you know, the anti uh, movement. Right. And so uh, the president has tried to deem this, you know, a terrorist organization. You have to remember that, uh, you know, Zuckerberg and Facebook, they're a U.S. company. Uh, they face a lot of pressure here. They want to stay in operation. Um, and at times now, Zuckerberg looks like he's lockstep with, you know, President Trump. And so what we see here is the, these policies being created to, uh, you know, again, uh, maybe seem like they're, um, you, know, you know, being unbiased now because there's been a lot of pressure coming from the Trump administration. But what's being what's happening on the content moderation front is that they are doing this kind of macro level keyword screening. And so Antifa will get kind of pulled into a filter and maybe doing some evaluation uh, and then, you know, kind of being swept uh, swept up in that. So in some some capacity, uh, Facebook has, uh, you know, kind of taken this stance, I think, in response to political pressure. All right. Professor Jennifer Greigel, thank you for joining us. Thank you.